Hello friends from R2 International. In this episode of the R2 International TV show, we are happy to introduce to you master artist Ralph Garafola, who's going to be sharing with us his story and his works. How are you doing, Ralph? I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. Welcome to R2 International and this is amazing what you're creating. Tell us, how did everything start? I start, when I start? Yeah. I started, well, I was born in 1929, but I started in the early 1930s. Uh, in those days, I didn't have paint. I just a piece of pencil, a pencil, and whatever paper I had, I used to draw. I drew, I drew, I drew, I drew. Um, I, I, I found things that were from the old masters. I, I didn't know who they were at the time, but I found them interesting. So I used to draw a lot of complicated, the copying the old masters. And apparently when I went to school, teachers recognized that I was drawing. And uh, in the lower grades, they had me paint. I never painted before. And they put me in a separate room and they gave me paints. <laughs> wow. Okay. And I remember I painted Columbus's Santa Maria. <laughs> and of course, it was a sailboat. I don't know how anything about any rigging, and, and it was just the sails on the Santa Maria. And um, there was two other occasions. Um, when I was in the fifth grade, apparently my teacher realized I, I can draw and, and, and paint, so she brought in uh, an Aztec village in 3D. And I had that teacher for a whole year in fifth grade. And I paint, I drew and painted that and cut out those things a whole year. <laughs> it was my, I was happy, okay? But what I didn't realize was that's the year where you learn grammar. So I don't know what's an adjective or verb, <laughs> but I painted. And from then I just took off, okay? Um, by the early 40s and so on, um, I thought I was it. I can draw and paint everything, okay? And I was. I look at some of the things that before I studied, I surprised myself, you know? But then I realized that there's things you have to know and you have to study. So I wound up studying with Frank J. Riley was probably the best teacher ever lived in the United States. And I studied with him for seven years. I became his assistant. And I absorbed everything he said. Consequently, I wrote a book just by his quotes. It's just, I can't tell you what I ate this morning, but I can tell you what he said in 1958. <laughs> and um, I just kept, obviously, um, I like doing portraits because each portrait is a separate story. There's a story with every portrait. And obviously I don't get them every day, so I paint everything that I have uh, uh, interesting. You know? Now most artists, they, they pick a subject and they paint over and over again. I, I can't do that, I never did it. Only once I did. For a workshop, there was a, a, a pier in, in Anna Marie Island, in Florida. I, I, I painted that five times in different days. I painted that scene in a, br a bright sunny day, a, a, a foggy over the, over says day, a overcast day, a foggy day, moonlight, and sunrise. <laughs> it almost drove me crazy painting the same thing over and over again. I'll never do that again. But it, it shows you that if you know your values, how light and dark something is, you can draw and paint any form. Not realizing it, because I grew up just drawing black and white, it was just values. I wasn't sidetracked with color. So consequently, I paint form very well. And, um, and then add the use of color, okay? Um, color itself, you know, like red, blue, green, and so on, doesn't make form. It's got nothing to do with form. What makes form is what they call values, how light or something is, okay? 
And then 80% of form is just by values, how light or something is, light and shade. And the other 20% is, is the edges, how you treat edges, and the strength of color. Not the color, but the strength of color. Now, if you know that, <laughs> wow. yes, you can paint form, you know. So I, obviously in school, uh, I painted the, the model for seven years. And that's, that's really, uh, if you're serious, you should, because if you can draw and paint a human model, you can draw and paint anything. It's the most complicated and most beautiful things we have. What irritates me lately is that they've utilized themselves. I know with a lot of tattoos, but all you know, a tattoo is nice, but not your whole body, you know. Uh, but anyway, that's it, you know. Painting the human figure is great, and that's why I like portraits, you know. But I've I've traveled to Europe, uh, you know, and uh, studying there. I mean, I paint a lot of things. My Venice is a favorite place. And I painted paintings from Venice, Paris, uh, Milan, um, uh, uh, a few other places in Italy, you know. Uffizi Gallery is tremendous, you know. The Louvre, you know. Um, what, 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 what I found amazing was, like, in the Louvre, I mean, the artwork there is unimaginable. I mean, beautiful stuff. And I go down this whole corridor, and there was a lot of people in one place and so on. I see what's going on there, you know. I go there, and everybody's trying to photograph this damn silly Mona Lisa. Yeah. Compare what's there. I'm Mona Lisa. <laughs> I the same. Not only that, what, what, what I like to tell people, you know, you like the Mona Lisa, but do you realize she has a big, long nose? <laughs> Uh, it's not that uh, the artist didn't know what he was doing. That was the fashion then. Long noses must have been elegant. If you look at all the paintings in, the, in that area, everybody has a long nose. <laughs> it was, I guess, the sexy thing to do at that time. You know. Uh, so I like to kid around. So you see the Mona Lisa with a big nose. Um, life, uh, art is all my life. Um, I, you know. I still do it. Um, I'm 88 years old, and I'm still painting. Okay, so um, I teach in Florida. I used to teach in New Jersey, but coming to Florida, uh, the schedules don't work out. So I teach in several places in, in, in Florida on the West Coast. The Sarasota Art Center. I taught at the Manatee Art Center. The, the Ringling Annex in, in Longboat Key. And then there's an art group from uh, the Midwest and Canada that come down here. They're really serious. I mean, I enjoy working with them. They really study and so on. So that, that makes my day, you know. It's just not a, a person wanting to go home with a painting. They're really serious and they study, you know. And consequently, that's why I wrote the book. And uh, I have another book coming up, maybe by the end of the year, maybe finish it. I don't know. Oh my goodness! Yes, yes, uh, you know, uh, the, the first book is on painting, okay, how to paint. Not my style. I don't paint in front of me. I, I teach you what you should know and you paint your own style. And how I, I you know, because a, a lot of people, they like an artist and they paint his style, okay? I have famous artists that I love. I don't paint like that, okay? I love Baldini, Sargent, Sarola, okay, Velasquez, and one of the best draftsmen is um, one of the old masters that uh, I think uh, was drawing exquisitely, you know, Ang, Ang, for the minutes I went, Ang, okay. I see the old masters, I see the old masters influencing your work. Ang was a draftsman, I mean, magnificent, okay. And uh, so I studied those guys, but I don't paint like that. I paint like me, you know. Um, I paint a little was that, tight, what they call tight or photographic. Oh, I, what, but, but I laugh at when somebody tells me, uh, oh, it's just like a photograph. I know it's a compliment, but a photograph isn't that way. <laughs> a photograph can't do that. 
But again, I, I, I appreciate that they think it's a compliment, you know. And that's my style. What happened was, um, working at the beginning, you know, it was tough working as an artist, so I became an illustrator. So I painted probably everything you could imagine. From food products, I had four of my clients were pharmaceutical companies. You name it, I painted from uh, tractor trailer way stations on a highway to some things that I can't mention. <laughs> you know, uh, um, human body inside and so on and so forth. So uh, I had the phone company, the insurance company, Bambergers and Barber stores, um, four different printers, and of course a whole mess of uh, advertising agencies, you know. Um, so that, that kept me going. Um, how do you choose your subjects? Do you paint from photograph? Studying from life for seven years, mm -hmm. I can paint from photographs because I know how to correct the photographs. Mm -hmm. The photo, the camera is a one-eyed liar. Yeah. This is everything on one plane. So it's not really 3D. And in fact, I teach my students why we see things in three dimensions, okay? We have two eyes, and the space between our eyes is one space of an eye, okay? And we look at something, okay, and if I'm looking at this, and with this eye, I see this edge, and with this, I see this edge, but with this edge, I see around the corner. Right. So that makes it three dimensional, right. okay? Right. And you mentioned uh, animals like dogs, where their eyes are far apart. I never saw a dog miss a frisbee because it just sits there. Yeah. <laughs> it, it can almost look behind it. So that's how you, 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 we see 3D. The camera can't do that, okay? And you have really control that the camera can't. You know, it's limited to film and whatever it is, but um, with paint, and if you know color, you can do anything. You can do anything. And how's a regular day for you? Do you paint or how, how's your routine? Um, I paint all the way in the wee hours of the morning. Oh. I go to bed when most people are getting up. <laughs> I get up late in the morning, but at night, I guess for so many years doing that, I prefer to paint at night. No interruptions, the phone doesn't ring. I can concentrate what I'm doing, you know. Uh, I've done that for years, and it just became a habit, you know. Um, So that, that, that's it. But once I paint, I mean, I keep going. Um, I don't paint too slowly. I mean, I, these paintings were done, you know, rather quickly. Most people say, oh, I took a year to paint that. I say, How could that be? <laughs> I, I can do those things in three weeks, you know. Once I get moving, um, I, I, I go, you know. And again, most of it is because stu you know what you're doing. Yeah. You know what you're doing. And uh, yes, now I prefer the paint with photographs, especially today, uh, even with the portraits that I do. Uh, nobody has the time to sit for 80 hours and whatever it takes. They're busy people. So I, I have a session with them, you know, establishing what they want. And we talk about the, the pose and so on. And then I take a photo session. But what I do do, To be really exact, I'll paint their complexion, just to match their complexion, and that's all I need. The photo reference and your complexion, that's it. That's where all this comes to. All right. Thank you so much. I am so happy that we get to interview you. When are your classes, the ones you're teaching? Um, um, uh, we start January and February. Okay. okay. That's when they'll start, because I usually come down like now the end of November mm -hmm. yeah. and the contracts start at them because then you have Christmas and so mm -hmm. So January, February until um, the end of May, June 1st, that was it. Then I go back to, to New Jersey. Nice. And what is the title of the new book, the one that's coming out next year? Um, the, uh, the one that's already done? That's, that's The Element of Painting okay. by Frank J. Riley. Uh, authored by me. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. And and the second book is 
outdoor painting okay. that Riley taught. I mean, he taught art like a science. And so that's almost finished. Okay. okay. And after that, I guess there's one more would be on drawing. Okay. That would be the third book. You know. okay. uh, the reason why I did the outdoor painting is because most people, that's what they're doing, you know. Landscape, now it's, it's, it includes landscape painting, seascape painting, and just outdoor painting. Figures outdoor and so on. Uh, I've seen portrait painters that are famous, but they're not used to doing a client that's outdoors. There's a famous portrait painter from out west. He did this rancher standing outdoors. And I mean, I know the guy was, he, uh, he was very talented, but he never painted a person outdoors. So he painted him like was indoors, and he's outside in bright daylight. Wow. Uh, so that didn't go. No, okay. You know, you have to know what to do. All right. Well, thank you so much, Ralph. So, so happy that we got to interview you. Okay. And I got to get your books. <laughs> yes. yes, because, again, yeah. if you're painting indoors, yeah. the difference between light and shadow is five different values between, you know, different mm -hmm. shades. Okay. Outdoors, it's two values because you have a second source of light. Okay. If you know those value changes, You'll paint for them. Alrighty. Wow, great. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for your time, for making it all the way here for the interview. And thanks, everybody, for watching.